Hello there, Force of Will players, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be going over uh, the results from the recent Wanderer events that occurred in Milan. Uh, ooh, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, but I think it's pronounced Poissy. Um, in France, Milan and Italy, and then the um, uh, Mexico GP as well. Uh, so we're going to be going over the top eight lists from each one there. For Milan, I know it had 44 players. I don't know how many players the France GP or the Mexico GP had. Um, if you're able to figure that out or you know, feel free to leave uh, that information down in the comments section, and I can potentially edit it into the description. Um, but anyway, so going over the top eight lists. So the top eight for Milan... Uh, we have their list. Four of the decks were uh, Red Kaguya, so it's Kaguya, but it uses the Moon stuff from back with like Isis and stuff back in uh, New Valhalla. So it uses some of the cards from back then uh, in order to facilitate more Moons, as well as kind of more explosive play lines and stuff like that, while still having all the control that Kaguya currently brings. Order Kaguya, the new Kaguya. Um, there was one Estimable Isle control, so the deck's uh, just hard control, uh, field control presence, so on and so forth. Uh, I think it plays pretty well into Kaguya, into other, into like order decks and stuff like that. So with um, Kaguya's being um, the predominant deck, it looks like, or at least the predominant um, powerhouse in Milan, at least, uh, the Estimable Isle deck did pretty well. There were two Mylesk Mooj Dart Draco Witch decks. That's what the the man who revealed the deck has been calling it, Mr. Steven Holsheiser in America, who got first place at the American Wanderer GP with the deck list. Um, so it uses My Lust and Mooj Dart, plays a bunch of cards that effectively play for zero mana, like Tea Party Before the Decisive Duel, Loki Enters the Game of Gods. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if the deck plays Melfi, but Melfi technically plays for zero mana. Things like that, and that also count as chance, so that you can play the... Um, Magical Dragon, which is a 1700-1700 that costs 5, but it costs 1 less for each chant you've played that turn. Um, and then it gets you a stone into play. So you get all these Magical Dragons into play, and then the kind of win con for the deck is you have some form of Darkness Will. You get to play a um, Witch of the Fallen Kingdom when you have 5 stones because of your stone for turn and then the 4 Magical Dragons, and then uh, you hit um, you get Pumpkin Witch out from your deck, give it hate, give all your dragons haste, and then swing for lethal on the first turn of the game. So it's kind of like a combo deck. And then there was one Mylist Gru's Ballesta deck. That deck is similar to the Magical Dragon lists in the sense of it kind of plays like zero mana spells, but the main thing it does is it plays the Nearlithotep cards to get stones, and then uses Gru's Ballesta's effect to get free stones basically so the stones that would shuffle back instead they're sacrificed off with Gru's Ballesta's effect and then you bring out a stone that won't shuffle back so you're kind of mana ramping each turn uh, using Gru's Ballesta and the Nearlithotep cards um, and then you just play a more like toolbox uh, with Prissia and other things like that so it's not really a combo deck you just ramp better than um, most other decks in the game maybe Kaguya ramps a little bit better than you uh, so that was the top eight for Milan. Uh, the top eight for the France GP was uh, Dante Belisle Inferno combo. Got first. Uh, Order Nearlithotep, uh, Violet, another Estema Belisle control. Odin control, which is kind of kind of like a floodgate style control with like Mistletane, uh, Dark Sun stuff like that. And then it also has um, uh, Artillerist of Faith in order to kind of get in a lot of damage very quickly. Um, Red Kaguya uh, Machina combo, so it used Order Machina, and we'll we'll see the lists in a minute here, but it used uh, Machina combo, draw out your whole deck, and then use Tidor to win the game off of an empty deck. And then Mono Light Lumia. So those were the top eights for the France GP. Uh, I'll go over the top eight for the uh, Mexico GP kind of at the very end. A lot of those lists feel a lot like outliers within the meta, as you can kind of see between both Milan and France, um, and as well as like the American event, if you take like all those lists, there's a lot of overlap between them. Uh, but if you take a look at the lists from uh, the Mexico event, there's not a lot of overlap between um, the deck lists that top aided there. So we'll kind of go over those last just to give them a mention because they are top eight lists, right? That does reflect at the very least the Mexico meta. Um, so it is at least worth mentioning them. Um, 
And then once we look at all the lists, I'm going to adjust my tier list for everybody uh, for Wanderer under the still current ban list and before the release of Game of Gods Revolution. Okay, so uh, getting right on into it. Uh, these will be the top eight lists for Milan. So these are the ones we have. Um, I'll make note if I see anything unique or interesting about the lists, but if they're pretty standard, um, we'll just kind of take a brief look at them so you can kind of see what they are and then move on to the next list. So starting off with the first place list, um, we don't, uh, I don't think there's a lot of stuff very unique um, or out of place for the list uh, at the very least. A lot of this seems pretty standard to what you're going to do. Bastet's a little bit interesting, however, um, a very unique thing you can do with Bastet uh, is you can Feast Sing, right? Uh, order the Feast Sing, flip back the order, so Feast Sing is now unordered, and then Bastet add the Feast Sing back to your hand because it's now a resonator, so you get to reuse Feast Sing. So it's a very um, effective use of Bastet. Um, a very effective use of your cancel spells because Feath Sing is your only cancel spell in the deck, as you can see. Um, I guess that is something to note. They did not play Fair Spell or Garion in the main. Uh, probably, it's not very impactful against the mirror match. A lot of the time, you just want to stick a Hanzo, and then moving on from Hanzo plays, those kind of just win you the game off the back of Hanzo. Stick him, resolve his enter effect, and then win the game from there. So your uh, three Lorites, four Feaths to kind of cap out on Stifle effects to prevent Lorite uh, or other players' Lorites from canceling your Hanzo because the order will protect it from uh, Garion um, and other types of cancel spells. Uh, Dawn of the Earth is also an interesting choice. Uh, I wonder what they actually put... <laughs> oh, I have to hover over that part, okay. Um, I wonder why they actually had this in here. I'm calm. Maybe for Persia or other things like that. There aren't a lot of decks currently that are really cheating in Resonators super fast. Like if you take a look at Kaguya or things like that, like they're all getting played. Um, it's not like they're just being put into the field except for the Prissia variant. So um, I'm interested what they were kind of using this for. It might be the final effect to get rid of moon additions, um, removing all non magic and non jerial cards your opponent controls until it costs zero from the game. Uh, it might be kind of like a uh, something for that. Um, and it because it removes them, it also plays around. Uh, the arena expansion of Kaguya. I was trying to think of the actual name, but I have no idea what the actual name is, or I couldn't pronounce it. I know it's Suki something. Um, so Dawn of the Earth might be in there for the mirror match. Uh, looking at the second place list. Um, second place list is running the Prissia. Uh, the Ayu is also interesting. Um, I, they probably did it for draw functionality. Light Light, I'm not really sure what you would use it for, except playing the uh, Dark Alices. Um, uh, primarily the Dark Alices, I guess, or just attempting to get like large pumps into the Ayu. It is an interesting win con off of the back of Hanzo, right? Because you have all your moons that can produce light, so you can kind of just keep pumping it with your moons, right? Every set of moons is plus 10, plus 10. Yeah, plus 10, plus 10. So every two moons is going to be plus 10, plus 10 for it. Uh, you also kind of get filter with her, so it might just be a way to facilitate more draw power for the mirror match. Um, so that is an interesting tech option. Uh, Dance of Spirits is pretty normal. The Nyarlathotep we've seen in quite a few of the lists. It's just an endgame as well as another version of Hanzo, basically. Uh, Garyon. Percy is interesting. Um, Percy can get you your Lorites. It can get you your... Um, it can get you the Ayu, I guess. It can get all of it. Uh, and they probably just used it as, again, another win con. They went heavier on, like, the win cons, whereas the first place list went a lot heavier on the control aspect um, and resolving Hanzo's enter effect. Uh, and then Dark Alice is a very good value card because you can sack off the moons. So it's just a lot of value there. Uh, third place, third, fourth place. Um, so this was Stemma Belial Hard Control. Uh, you can see it's a very interesting stone lineup. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the Amadeus, honestly. I don't actually know why they have all these stones. Were they playing Ultra Magic Stone Golem? No. I'm curious why they're playing this amount of stones, honestly, or like this setup of stones. Because Amadeus is really only impactful, especially because he's at 11, is really only impactful for the... Uh, I mean, it gives you light, right? But like you can just play another duel. 
um, to give you light in something else, and it's only relevant against other tag sets. So they might have been expecting more tag, more like the Draco Witch, more uh, Stemmable Isles, more Dante Belisle combos, um, in order to get kind of like a uh, five color stone off of Amadeus. Um, here, Silmaria, Dance of Spirits, very good card. Dark Alice, Robert Princess, very good card. Uh, and then you can see just all the chants for the deck. Uh, not a lot of this seems out of place. Parry is interesting. Um, I'm trying to think what... Because parry prevents damage done by spells. Uh, I'm trying to think of what they would be using parry on. Godly Aura, you could use it on for the Kaguya matchup. Uh, you could use it on Firestorm for Violet, if you're afraid of Violet. Um, you could use it for Nearlithotep cards. Uh, you could... You could technically use it in the mirror match for like Prideful, Fire, Gradius, things like that. Um, so Parry is an interesting tech option to have in the main. Uh, revealing the power of Salvation um, is for Inferno combo decks, so I think they're really afraid of Inferno combo. Uh, this deck has a terrible matchup against Inferno combo, so it's pretty relevant to be afraid of that deck. Um, Intimidation's probably for Violet or Draco Witch, and then... Um, just some other interesting like hard control stuff. Battle comes to an end. Uh, Black moonbeams, etc., etc. Uh, taking a look at the sideboard, um, nothing too out of the ordinary. Uh, Dante, in order to move into Dante Bell Island for no combo, if they want to. Satan, obviously, and then more fog effects and addition destruction, things like that. Things to deal with grave. Good, just side deck options that you would normally see. Um, this is a Draco Witch list, right? Uh, so normal setup here, I think. I don't remember if Steven for America was playing Welsers. That'd be an interesting uh, thing to check. It's just a one mana, like, kind of cancel spell-ish, um, which, I mean, the deck would like a one mana spell, considering your opponent probably won't get a next turn, so it works very well functionally. Uh, and then zero mana card, 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 searches your dragon, counterspell. <laughs> so you can kind of see what the deck's trying to do, right? Um, once people kind of know what this deck does, though, it does get fairly weak in the grand scheme of things, right? Like, if you take a look at how they're actually winning, you could play Garyons if the game goes far enough, but a lot of the time Magical Dragon will be the main win con, right? And if Magical Dragons are dealt with, they don't really have recursion. So as long as you, if you can somehow kill the dragons and prevent them from attacking you, um, you're doing okay. This version isn't playing the Pumpkin Witch set, so it looks like they're just slamming them all into play and then um, kind of like passing turns and stuff like that. So I'd be interested to see, um, I'm interested to see if the other list was playing the Pumpkin Witch stuff. But overall, just like a combo-esque list. I don't actually know if this version of the deck is really toxic. It might be, but uh, I'd have to I'd have to wait and see. And if anything, it's really only because my list gives you the extra red, in my opinion. Uh, Kaguya, another red Kaguya list. Uh, this one was playing Academy Guard of Lycaon. I think they were more afraid of the Draco Witch lists because that is what Academy Guard primarily hits is like the My Less Mooge Dark combo decks. Um, it doesn't do a whole lot against Kaguya or the other like control lists that we've seen. So I think they teched heavily for that, um, which I'm actually unsure how good Kaguya's matchup is against uh, Draco Witch, but um, we'll see. Uh, Shackles of Ice, very good against Belial uh, and like Inferno combo. Prevents them from comboing you, doesn't affect order at all. Uh, so very powerful there, uh, and then just normal side deck stuff. Uh, another Red Kaguya, they main Shackles, so they're more afraid of Dante Belisle, things like that. Uh, I mean, it does affect the Six Age Tag Rollers, like they can't filter with Mooj Dart, can't burn you with My Lust, but I think those effects are less prevalent than the God's Arts from uh, the Fallen Angels. Um, this deck played the Perseus, this deck played one Academy Guard, so I think they were using it to search off of the Perseus just in case. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that necessarily. Like, they upped their Academy Guard count post-board, so they might have just had one in the event that they wanted to draw it, or, like, hard mole for it, seeing what they were playing against. But, like, you're not really, against, like, the Draco Witch list, if you have enough, like, if you have enough turns to pay one mana into Big Show in order to play pay two mana to play Persia to get Academy Guard out, you're probably winning that match. Um, against, like, Draco Witch, right? So, uh, 
I don't know if I like just the one of. Like, again, four is probably fine because it guarantees you draw one and then you can, like, ship it. But, um... I don't know. I'm. I did not. I did not play. So <laughs> couldn't tell you. Down the drain is an interesting tech option. Uh, I think it's really only good in the mirror or against like Violet, right? So like the mirror for Nyarlathotep specifically. Uh, but I don't even know if you'd bring it in just to hit that one option against Violet. It's good because it hits Tiny Violet, hits Improved Burning Robot if they're playing it, hits Baja, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, fifth through eighth. Okay, so we got uh, my list Gru's. Uh, huge stone lineup. I'm never going to complain about a Gru's Balesta stone lineup. They could play one of every stone in the game up to 20 stones, and I would still think it's fun. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the nature of the deck. Um, uh, again, it's just a Persia toolbox. They also have the Phantasmal Ascendant kind of ramp stuff as well, uh, and the Sun of Manifestation of Powers. Um, again, it's the Nyarlathotep stuff in order to sack it off with Gru's Ballesta in order to ramp a stone. Right. Um, they are playing the Pumpkin Witch setup, so they can go Prissia, Prissia, like Prissia, 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 Witch of the Fallen Kingdom, the other Witch of the Fallen Kingdom in the sideboard, Pumpkin Witch, right? And then that's, I believe that's lethal, right? 7, 14, 21, 28, plus 8, 36, plus 3, 39. <laughs> it's 100 off lethal. Um, but like that, that kind of line, right? They can tap my list, I guess, for the other 200. Magical Arrow. Uh, people have been playing Magical Arrow as a sideboard option against, um, Dark Tree, uh, specifically, um, just to kind of burn them out of their resources if they're, if people are afraid of Dark Tree. Um, Blazer. Blazer's a very good tech option currently against Order as well as Tag, depending on, um, your head judge. Uh, we are getting an updated ruling for Blazer because currently how it works is it will blank the order card, so it loses Force Resonance and it loses Force Revolution Order uh, or um, Revolution Order, whatever it's called. So uh, it kind of just super screws over order if it resolves. Uh, otherwise, just Cancel Suites uh, looks pretty normal. Otherwise, and then you see the Dawn of the Earth. It's a good sideboard tech. And this says third to fourth place, but I think it's fifth to eighth because there are two third to fourth places up top. It's Milas Mooj, it's Draco Witch. Um, I think they're playing, yeah, they're probably playing, I think, the exact same list. Uh, their sideboard might be a little bit different, but same stuff we've seen Academy Guard, Shackles Vice, uh, Black Moon Ray, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So those are the lists for uh, Milan. So the uh, lists for France. So this is our Dante Belial list. Uh, it's just Inferno combo, right? You're just trying to get to Inferno as fast as possible. Dance Spirits prevent your opponent from playing on your turn, on their turn, whatever it is, and then you still have some hard control options that um, Belial gives you, right? So those are all there. Um, the good, so the thing with Whispers and the thing with uh, Final Battle, there's a couple differences for this card. Uh, or for each card. So with Whispers, Whispers is all done on resolution. However, it is at quick cast speed. Final Battle is all done as cost. So Final Battle gets to be played as the cost of the card. So you can guaranteed to lose the life. Whispers, you aren't guaranteed to lose life, but you can play it at instant speed. So those are the two differences between them. It's why they're both in the deck. Um, and then Inferno is just the win con, right? Um, Nothing really out of the ordinary here. Flashing smile is interesting for like a board wipe type deal. Um, everything else looks pretty standard for the most part. Their stone lineup is interesting. I don't know why they're uh, why these decks have been playing such a weird like mix of stones. Um, I don't know if it's like their like ratios they worked with or what, but um, it's it, it is interesting to look at. Uh, second place was Order Nyarlathotep. Um, I don't think there's anything weird here. You see the addition of Rook Egg and Cthuga for extra damage. It also gets you either Isis, Phantasmal, Ascendant, like any of the Nyarlathotep Resonators will get you with Rook Egg, um, or you can just Cthuga Train. Uh, very good there. Um, Shrine of the Dragonoids, uh, just extra damage. Last Secret Sword, just more damage. Um, so it's just an all-in burn deck to try and kill your opponent as quickly as possible, but it does still have green for Lorites. Uh, it has light as well for Calamity Shields in the board. They are playing Ultra Magic Stone Golem, which, mm, 
is interesting because of all the Neurothotep cards, right? Like, if you get Magic Stone Dance of Chaos, you can play this for one, right? That's, that's oh god. That's how much this costs? Yeah, like one. Um, so maybe it's like a functional board wipe. I don't know how I feel about it. Who knows? Uh, Rogue Spectator and then Witch of Quenched Fire for the Mirror and Violet. Uh, Violet. Uh, four Baja. Standard. Standard Violet. <laughs> Setting the stages. Amadeus is in the board and Amadeus is in the main. Uh, your colors don't really matter as Violet, but um, I don't know how I feel about Amadeus anymore. Uh, I feel like you could probably have better stones. Like, you'd rather just play Moonshades, right? So maybe they just didn't have access to Moonshades, or they felt like they didn't want to have the loss of life. Because you can still pay Moon into Violet's um, activated effect, so... Um, a Stem of Belial. Uh, is there anything unique? They're playing Castle of Belials, which is a little bit interesting. Uh, you don't normally see that. Uh, Phantom Beastmaster is kind of neat. Um... It's just a 10-11 worth of stats for one mana, as long as you have AJ Ruler. Um, and then you can also prevent uh, damage that would be dealt to you, so it can kind of prevent like random OTK lines or other things like that. Um, which can be prevalent, especially with a Stem of Belial, outside of like Dante Belial, right? Uh, everything else seems pretty standard. Choir beginning um, just looks like a pretty normal list. Alice's Fantastic Tricks a little neat, um, and then Violet and Maria Bella to kind of retain mana value, but you don't have a whole lot of red, so I'm not sure how much that practically matters. Uh, it looks like... Oh, they do have four Charlottes. Okay. I was like, it looks like they're playing a Charlotte board, but I don't remember seeing Charlottes. I guess I just skipped over it. So they are playing four Charlottes with a Charlotte sideboard, kind of for tech. It's very good against the Mirror or against um, Inferno combo. Uh, so, uh, impactful card there. Uh, Odin Control. Um, again, they're playing Banquet Demon, Ultra Magic Stone Golem with an interesting stone set. Um... Well, I wouldn't say interesting stone set. Um, a, a ultra magic stone golem effect stone set. Um, and then uh, Artillerist, as well as the Floodgates in the form of Mistletane, um, Fallen Kingdom. Uh, the sword is technically a Floodgate against like OTK styled decks. So against stuff like, um, like Baja. Like decks that just do like one large uh, damage value. Um, Dark Sun is technically also a Floodgate. Uh, because you are Odin, uh, it's very good in play against um, against Kagia for the moons and stuff like that. Uh, shackles and just other just good generic sideboard cards as well. Um, Red Kagia, uh, Sylvia's Burning Flame is new. It's an interesting tech option. It is off the screen. Oh god. Um, I believe. Let's see if I do this. Okay, we can kind of see the text at the top. <laughs> Uh, so you give a J Resonator plus 800 for Strike, Precision, and Pierce, or you can do 800 target J Resonator for a singular red mana. So it's kind of like a Gradius, it just doesn't blank, or it also gives something of yours Pierce. So you can give your Hanzo Pierce, stuff like that, to kind of guarantee lethal. Uh, it's an interesting concept there. Uh, and then Friend Calling Whistle, uh, you search your deck for a ninja, it's just another way to search Hanzo. Uh, it's a one mana way to search Hanzo, in addition to um, N Word shall be. Uh, Elvish Bowman is uh, you tap it to destroy additions. It's for the mirror match. Uh, it can also be good against Odin to destroy Dark Sun um, in the event that you're having issues with it. Uh, and then Heavenly Gust is for more addition destruction. They opted to not play the Dawn of the Year stuff, just raw addition destruction instead. Uh, and then Kusanagi Matoko in Bodysuit. It's just not showing me what this card is. I do not know what this card does. Um, I know it's a dive effect. I think it gives something like Swiftness or something like that. Um, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Deus Ex Machina. This deck was interesting. Kind of an outlier as well. Um, also doesn't have a side deck. So <laughs> that is something to keep in mind. Um, the idea that this... Uh, I'm assuming that the deck was going for is you just draw your whole deck. And then um, win the game off of Tidor, right? So you have four Mirages... Uh, you have four more four Cs to play as much of those as possible. Four Violets to draw as much as possible. Loki enters the Game of Gods, draws you more. Um, Light of the Unknown draws you more. Uh, Knight of Knights procs your T-Door to make sure you don't die. Uh, T-Door's gimmick uh, prevents your opponent from really playing cards on your turn, but also mills you. Uh, so you get to your cards earlier. 
Knowledge from the Future, another draw spell. Um, so you can pay one to draw two uh, as long as you are Machina, and you control a machine entity, which in most cases Tidor or Violet will be off of order, right? Um, no real cancel suite, they're purely just going to try and mill out. Um, but yeah, so that's what they did. And then Mono Light Lumia. Uh, Mono Light Lumia had uh, one Awakened Magic Stone, the Earth, and nine Basic Stones. So they were playing... So Soul, uh, right here, Mr. Soul, Envoy of Light, is also not displaying. He has the Enter effect when he enters to reveal the top card of your stone deck. If it's a basic uh, light stone, you can put it into play untapped. So, uh, and he costs two mana. He's a 4-4. Four, four. So it's just a way to ramp up, and what you do is you play it early with Energize. So you go Energize on one, play your soul, play something like Shining Strike or some form of rest ability to rest the soul, you get a new stone into play, etc., etc. Um, the other thing that you can do with Violet is, or Violet, <laughs> with Lumia is um, Final Stance kind of loops. So you can use Dark Alice. Dark Alice can sacrifice off Final Stance in order to draw you cards. And then Brunhild, uh, Brunhild, 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 can resurrect your Final Stance from the grave. You just take extra turns, and then you can kind of loop that near infinitely um, within the deck in order to kill your opponent. Tea parties are just good flashing smiles of board wipe. I use little friend... Draws a card, I guess. I guess it's just an enter draw a card on a light body. Uh, the Nearlithotep is to remove off of Lumia if you ever perform Judgment. Artillerist can also discard your final stances and do a chunk of damage. Um, and then Lumia, Saint of Creation, is your draw power. Uh, in the board, um, uh, Road to the Sacred Queen rests everything that comes into play, all resonators that come into play. So it's good against Magical Dragon if they try and kill you that turn. It's good against Baja. Um, it's good against like Prissia combo decks, um, as long as they don't play the stuff on your turn. Um, it's good against other stuff like that. And then you have Charlotte, as well as a kind of functional Charlotte sideboard with Keep the Faith and Seventh Boon in order to stop uh, the tag Fallen Angel combo decks, Dante Belisle combo Inferno. So those are the lists from France. So those are those. And then looking at the quick, the Mexico lists real quick. Um, first place, uh, David Neris with uh, Nyarlathotep, pretty standard, just Nyar deck, and then it also has Lorites. Um, you can see the sideboard here. Maluvas are nice, as they serve as a kind of uh, um, like hand refill, basically. Uh, so Nyarlathotep, uh, Shiva. This Shiva was just it was Prissia combo, but you also get to play Rig Veda, one of the best cards in the game. Um, and then it also had the Mimi stuff as well. Uh, third place um, was a Stemma Belial control. Uh, you can kind of see all the stone stuff from here. The Ragstone is interesting. Um, I feel like you'd rather never call a Ragstone on turn one. I don't know if you can afford it, but um, being able to just always judgment your rulers or tap them for beginning of a fairy tale is nice. Uh, outside of that, I don't think anything is too crazy. Um, deck 4, another Nearlithotep deck, however this one is basically an Alice deck, but a Nearlithotep deck. So it it just maxed out Regalia, and then it played um, this Light Fairy. So the Light Fairy gains, I believe, plus 400, plus 400 for each Regalia in play. So the whole idea was use Strategic Meeting, which is um, white, uh, Light Light, and then you draw X cards, where X is the number of Regalia you control to draw a whole bunch of cards, have your uh, play more regalia that you draw, play your light fairy, and then kind of dome your opponent. Um, there's just the one of IU, same kind of concept, IU can just dome your opponent. Um, so it kind of just maxed out on regalia and then went with a lower uh, resonator count. Um, Elfie's in the board, shackles, etc., etc. Uh, Wolfgang combo uh, is there's nothing really I can say about this deck. It's locked into Darkness Chance or Darkness cards and uh, and Cthulhu cards are the only cards it can include in the deck. It's pretty simple how the deck works. It gets free mana off of um, Umer. You play Umer with a free Awakening on Shub. Shub searches another Shub, and then you just kind of loop that out. You use the final thing to play Yogg-Sothoth, and then Yogg-Sothoth will give them all um, Swiftness and plus a thousand. 
and then you can kill your opponent from there. However, if any of that gets interrupted, um, at like the very end, either Shub's effect gets, or not Shub, um, Yogg's effect gets interrupted, or he dies, or anything like that, you will lose the game because you will have five madness counters. So it's kind of like an all-in like style combo deck. Uh, there's not really a whole lot I can say too much about it. Like you just play good darkness discard cards and then have the TK in the deck. Um, Violet, uh, the Violet list. Hanzo Hattori is interesting. I don't actually remember what Hanzo does. I think it draws a card when it deals damage or something like that. Um, so interesting tech there. Uh, the other thing is there's no Atomic Turbulences or Bajas in here. I don't know if they just didn't have them or if they were playing under the assumption they were banned <laughs> or anything like that, um, but you just don't see those in here. Uh, one of Tyler Violet, one of uh, Improved Burning Robot, and then interesting uh, like Thunders and more burn options in the board. Uh, seventh place was Persia, just old Regalia Persia with four Sacred Beasts. <laughs> Can't really comment too much on it. it, has friendship counters and all that good stuff. Zeeks are in the board for cancel spells. Um, the Unsealing of God uh, for destruction, and then this uh, I believe is a fight spell. Um, I forget what it's called, but I believe it is a fight, uh, fight spell. Welser is very interesting for um, copying chants, right? His god art to put him into play, and then he copies a chant once per turn for free. Um, unique card. I, I, I'm, I feel like we might see more of him in the future, honestly. Uh, and then finally, uh, eighth place was a Lilius deck, but it's playing Wolfgang cards. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if they were just using the Lilius as kind of like a OTK style engine, or what was happening here. Um, but, uh, interesting take on the list uh or on lilius at the very least yeah, there's nothing in here that really synergizes with lilius directly so they might have just been playing the demonic worlds um and might have either not had the wolfgang felt that they wanted lilius in order for like a kind of end game win con as opposed to going over fallen angel of terminuses um but yeah uh so those were the mexico lists uh so now what we're going to do um we're going to take uh, this is the tier maker. What, a, what an interesting ad in the bottom right there. Um, so this is the tier maker that I made before we had any wanderer data. So this is just pure uh, our thoughts through testing what we had seen, um, what we had thought could potentially be powerful, um, so on and so forth. So in the C and D tiers, how I had kind of split these up initially and didn't hadn't really adjusted them too much was we included them as a form of decks that could cheat mana, decks that had a way to cheat mana within them. Um, so like, for example, Dark Alice cheats mana with three tea party members, recovering her regalia over and over again. Uh, Faria... Faria was one of the ones that doesn't really cheat mana, but had a very good control lineup um, and had proven to be a powerful control deck within the past, even in like Rezard format and other stuff like that. Rezard has Black Wizard. Um, Arlo just has his Regalia. It was just another Regalia ruler. Um, D tier also included decks that I thought didn't belong with the rest of these, but I didn't have data on, right? Uh, I just didn't know how they were going to function. So we'll kind of update this a whole lot, and then we didn't have anything in S tier. Uh, so based off of tournament results, right? So Kagiya will be in S tier, right? There were um, four Kagias at Milan. There were uh, one or two in France. <laughs> I think one. One Kagiya. One Kagiya. There was one Kagiya that top aided France. There were four that top aided um, in Milan. There was one that top aided in the America GP. Um, but it's proving to be a very large powerhouse, right? Uh, probably the best control deck um, in terms of cancels and stuff like that, in terms of stifles. Uh, however, it is not um, uh, the best field control deck, I guess I should say. Uh, moving on to Welser, um, Welser I'm going to put in B tier. The reason for that is because Welser didn't get to really shine with Prisia 
alternative Prissy and stuff like that, and the infinite, um, which I still believe that deck is the best at pulling off. Uh, it's just that the other decks became have so much mana ramp and get so much mana early and are now killing early that you don't really have any turns to set up to the infinite. Um, or, at the very least, just like Prissia turns. So um, we're going to drop Welser down a tier if he continues to not perform. I also don't know if people really like him or don't play him a lot. Um, and the people who would probably play him would just play a better version of the combo deck, right? So we just might not have a lot of results with him. Um, Alice, I'm going to put... I need to be careful with this because... So I might keep Alice in A tier. So there was a very large amount of Alice's at the American GP. I don't know how many were at the other GPs. The American GP had one top, right? Um, out of all of them. Uh, however, the deck is very strong against decks that can't really stop it. And what do I mean by that? Like Belial, like things like that, right? So like... Alice is powerful against decks that don't have a way to just counteract the damage that Ayu is putting in. So Belial, Dark Tree, like other things like that. But it can fold very heavily to those other decks. I also don't think it goes as fast as something like Violet. Um, so we might... We'll drop it down to B tier. So we'll drop it down to B tier, because again, uh, everything B tier and above, right? I could see top aiding a GP. Um... Anything, well, anything anything B tier or above, I could see potentially winning a GP uh, and top eighting. C tier is they top eight, but there's no way they ever like win in an actual top eight environment. So we'll put, we'll put Alice in B tier. I still think it could win depending on how a format shapes up, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, Nyarlathotep, I'm going to keep it there. There was one that top aided France and then one that top aided Mexico, or two that top aided Mexico. One was just the Regalia version that they had. Um, and then we had a couple that top, did pretty high in like top 16, like 10th and 11th place, I think, um, in the American event. So Niar has been kind of seeing some representation. It just hasn't really broken through into the top eight until these most recent events, but it's still one of the more prevalent aggro decks. Um, and it does very well in those kinds of environments, right? So we'll keep it in B tier. Um, Violet, I'm just going to keep, I'm going to keep Violet in A tier for now. Uh, we had one take ninth place. In the American GP, we had a couple that topped in the other events as well. Um, I mean, Atomic Turbulence Baja just kind of wins you games, right? Like, you just win the games off of the back of them. Um, and there was a world where that ninth place Violet got 8th place. It, it lost off of tiebreakers all the way down to, like, 12th. <laughs> they all had the same record as 8th, but um, it just all came down to tiebreakers. So we're going to keep Violet in A tier for now. Uh, the deck is still plenty powerful, it's plenty explosive, and plenty durable, um, and consistent. Uh, it just sometimes folds to different, like, games and different styles. Uh, Lilius? Uh... It's gonna drop, but I don't know if it goes to C tier or D tier. I think it goes to D tier. Um, like, again, I don't think it's as bad as the decks that are all down here. Uh, the top eight, the one that top aided was effectively a Wolfgang deck, just with Lilius as a ruler, but I think Lilius still has enough aggro to outpace the rest of these decks down here. It just can't keep up with the decks up here, and I don't really foresee it top aiding a lot of um, larger events, especially, um, but just events in general in the first place. Wolfgang, uh, would I keep it in the same tier as these two? Probably not, so I'd probably put Wolfgang down to C tier. Um, that might change depending on what happens with like the ban list. It's like if we lose Phantasmal Ascendant, or if it's like you can only play Umer with Wolfgang, or like things like that. Um, maybe Wolfgang goes back up to B tier, but I don't really foresee it winning an event with like this kind of aggro deck existing, this kind of deck existing, Kaguya existing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I could see it getting top eight based off of its matchups going through. Uh, Astema, Belial, Dante are all moving up to A tier. Um, Tag has just been proving to be so powerful still, um, and just putting out very, very good results. Uh, Arla, we haven't seen Arla at all. I don't think anyone's been playing it, but I can still see just someone winning, or not winning, but like getting into top eight off the back of an Arla, <laughs> Arla infinite combo. So we'll drop him down to C tier, uh, and then keep him there for now. Uh, Almerius, no one's really been playing Almerius Mooge Control. 
there haven't been a whole lot of them. Um, but Almerius is being used as a very good sideboard option, and I want to make that clear. So Almerius moving into a deck with like Mujdart and signing out of my list, or vice versa, um, has been something that we've seen like into Violets or decks that do a lot of damage to kind of give you a buffer, but a lot of people haven't just been maining Almerius. So I, I'm going to keep Almerius in B tier. Uh, Mujdart, we're going to move up to A tier, and then to kind of go with Mujdart going up to A tier, I'm going to move Mylas, and I'm going to move Gruz Ballesta up to A tier. Um, the thing to keep in mind with these decks, Belial is integral to Astema and Dante. Mylas is integral to Mujdart and Gruz Ballesta. Like, they're just... These two, Mujdart and Gruz, use my list. These two, Estema Dante, use Belial. So Belial is the main ruler for this. My list is the main ruler for these decks. However, because they require the other ruler, they're all going to move up the A tier for right now. Okay, um, Just because they're off the back of them. The My List Gruz deck is still plenty powerful. I could see it winning an event um, through certain decks or certain matchups, things like that. And then My List Muj... Um, I mean, combo decks can always form to the meta. Like, they can always change. So I could potentially see, in a world, Draco Witch gets better in the event that certain bans don't happen or the format changes with Game of Gods Revolution, so on and so forth, right? Uh, Ragnarok. Min might hate me, but I'm going to put Ragnarok down to C tier. Again. <laughs> Again. Anything in C tier... I could see top aiding an event. I don't see it winning the event. Okay, so I'm gonna put Ragnarok down in C tier. Um, it just hasn't proven. Just doesn't have a lot of results. Part of that is a lot of people don't play it. Um, so there haven't been a whole bunch of just people playing Singleton Ragnarok. Um, they've been playing other decks. That doesn't mean Ragnarok is bad necessarily. It just we don't have a lot of data on how the deck functions but it has performed well in the past in the hands of players that enjoy it. Um, and I do want to give it that credit. So uh, while potential top players or players that have been winning events or topping events haven't been on Ragnarok, there have been in the past and in this format decks that have been, players that have been doing well with Ragnarok decks, and I want to make sure that that is <laughs> still the case. <laughs> it is still kept that the Ragnarok is there. Um, Dark Tree. I'm not, I'm going to put it down in C. Same kind of concept, right? We had a few in the America event. I don't know how many were in the other events. Um, it's more of like a gatekeeper deck. Uh, it's If you don't have a way to beat Dark Tree, you're just probably not going to do well at a tournament and have a bad time if you ever run into it. And like whenever you're making a deck, you have to keep in mind you need to have a way to beat Dark Tree. Otherwise, you just don't win, right? You'll just eventually lose. So there's... So it... It, it's kind of toxic in that kind of gameplay. I don't really like that style of like deck design, I guess, but that just is what the deck is good at. So um, that's where it shall be. Uh, Lumia. Uh, B tier and above could win an event, so I'm going to put Lumia again down in C tier. Same kind of concept. I don't see it winning an event, um, but it did top 8 1 recently, uh, and I could see other flicker versions like the old. Um, uh, Verdant Green, Autoroctia lists uh, to give things like haste, especially if, especially if stuff like this ends up like banned or touched or dealt with or anything like that. Um, you could see some of these decks move up because they just have better matchups. Um, Brunhild, Brunhild is also going to come down here. The most recent list that I've seen is Brunhild. The most recent list that I put out for Wander Wednesday was Brunhild Seal, I believe. Um, if not, it was like the week before. Uh, the Brunhild Seal list, I think, is the most, the best version of Brunhild. Um, and again, it can have very good matchups. Zero mana counter spells is nothing to snuff at. Um, it can do very well against certain decks in the meta. It's going to do very poorly against Order because <laughs> their stuff can't be canceled. Um, but 
uh, it does have, like, again, it can have good matchups. So that is something to keep in mind with it. I do think you could top eight with that list. I do think you could potentially find another Brunhild list, maybe Brunhild aggro, something like back in the old days that we had with Resurrection. But um, uh, I do think that list does have legs. Well, sir, we moved down from A tier to B tier. We just don't have enough results with it. But I do want to give it enough credit because I do think that the Persia version of the deck is quite powerful. Uh, one, two, three, four. Those we all move down to C tier. Asmodeus, um, we just don't have results with it. I could still see some random Asmodeus, Dante, Asmodeus, whatever top, just because it hit the nuts off of its god's arts. I could see that happening. Um, Gil Alhamat, I don't think it goes fast enough, so we're just going to move it down to D tier. It's still a decent control deck. It can still get black moonbeams for free. It's still probably very good against order. Um... So we'll just keep it down there in D tier. Uh, stealth, like specifically dinner time stealth, we'll probably move down to D tier. Same kind of thing. It just doesn't have any results, but I feel like mm, D tier. It's so hard because I feel like if you draw the nuts hand, you're just probably winning off the back of that, but you don't really do anything. You know what, we're, we're going to move it down into the the outscaled category. We're going to put it down there. Um, I just don't think it's doing enough. Even with Dinner Time, I think the cards are just too... The stealth cards themselves, as well as chance standbys, are just too unimpactful with what we currently have. Um, that they just they aren't prevalent enough in today's metagame. Um, Fox... Could I see someone topping an event with Fox? I don't think so. Maybe? Let me think about Fox. We're going to come back to him. R&R. &R. R &R is Mooj Dart, but on a single body that also has some random utility. Uh, if you flip it. However, R&R um, &R also doesn't give you a six card hand. And R and R kind of needs change the world to be broken. So we're we're gonna move R and R down to here. The Moose Dart cycle effect is still pretty relevant, and he gives green energize, um, which is still good. So we'll we'll put it R and R in D tier. If change the world ever gets unbanned, R and R might move up because its flip side is very impactful. The funny thing about R and R's flip side though is it does get killed by Black Moonbeam. Um, but it's it's funny that because of order, pe more people are playing Black Moon Beam or Black Moon Ray, and R and R hates that. So with order being good, R and R just kind of directly gets worse. So that that is an interesting factor. Uh, TSW, um, <coughs> can I see TSW topping an event? Maybe. Mm. It would be, I don't know if it would be the stone destruction list that I put out for one of my, like, first Wander Wednesdays. I don't think that's the best version of TSW. Um, but I think you could potentially get away with TSW topping an event. It would depend on your matchups, I think. But I feel like you could get away with it. It would depend on your matchups. Hmm. I don't think you could do it consistently. We're gonna we're gonna put it down in D tier, and for the same reason, we'll also put Fox down in D tier. I just don't think the decks are doing it consistently enough um, in order to like what they're trying to do, um, or can play through enough interaction that uh, they can warrant being in C tier. Uh, Magna, we're gonna keep Magna up there. I just don't think people like that deck, but I think that deck does a lot, and it cheats mana a lot, uh, just due to like Genesis as well as like um, Awakening of the Winged Lord and like other stuff like that. Uh, Faria, same thing, kind of like still like the best control deck, I think, um, for AO uh, rulers. Like if you're playing, trying to play light blue control, uh, Faria might be better than Almerius Mujdart. Um, there is just that potential. So we'll keep Faria up there. Arlo, we just don't have any results for, uh, and no one's like ever played it. So I think we're just going to put it in outscaled. Um... Rezard will move down to D tier. We just don't have results. Um, so I just... I, I, and I just don't know how that deck plays anymore without Athenia, Sigurd, like all that stuff. Like you have Makage, Rhea, part of true power kind of loops, 
but I don't know if you're doing that consistently enough or well enough in order to warrant the deck being there. Dark Alice just has the three Tea Party members loops. Uh, I don't know if that's good enough. Um, so we're, we're also going to move it down to D tier. Uh, yeah, I guess you can go in front of Rezard. Gil, same thing. Uh, Gil can search stuff. He cheats mana for like spirits and herbs, uh, elementals and like spirit magics. Um, and there are ways to cheat stuff out with like dinner time, like judgmenting early, playing Inheritor of the Stars early for more mana, playing Leaf Paladin. All right. So like he has things that he can do. It's just not super efficient, consistent things like that right uh, but he can like search for chance and other things and that is pretty impactful fair is unfortunately the same kind of thing mono green elves might be decent or just an elf deck uh or elf using the elves for ramp and playing other green cards might just be powerful enough um i'd have to wait and see because like if you go first or if you go second right you call your stone you get you play your spirit caller elf Let's assume nothing happens to it. You activate Fair's effect. You now have a stone. You have your green energize. You have two green will going to your opponent's turn. They have two will, hopefully, <laughs> depending on what you're playing against, I guess. They have their two will, so you're playing two will for two will, right? Um, so that is, uh, it, it just has that aspect to it. I just don't think a lot of people are playing it. And the flip side isn't as powerful as it once was. Uh, Excalibur Genesis, this is kind of biased. Um, the thing with Excalibur Genesis uh, is it can just, because it gets the free Light Will, it can uh, invest that Light Will into either a Tea Party before the Decisive Duel or into a Flute, which is eight different cards that are kind of a ramp for you because it's mana that'll filter out anyway. And then you just call a stone, you pass, you go into your opponent's turn with two Will. If they're tapped out, you just rip a Dance of the Spirits and then you can move into your turn and you have, if you're flute, you just have the dork. Um, and then you have three light will and with three light will, plus you get the extra draw off of the Excalibur Genesis trigger. If you have like two Schrodingers um, or even if you have Schrodinger Magna, if you called a redstone on the first turn, um, you can flip and just kill your opponent like off the crack back. So it just like has that potential um, to just be like impactful and powerful. So um, it'll we'll, we'll keep it in C tier. I could see it topping an event. Olivia, same thing. It has its own cancel suite. It has instant speed dolly once per game, uh, which is nothing to snuff at. Um, and so it's just going to stay there. Vlad is getting into outscaled. I don't know why I ever put it into C tier. Ride Miles baited me. Um, you, you need two heart-to-hearts to resolve in order for this to be like any form of good. You're not chaining mana, you're not doing anything. I hate it. I don't know how I was convinced on it in the first place. Loki, Loki just has that turn zero Loki deck. I don't think there's anything better that Loki is doing. Um, however, with more orders coming out uh, and with what we've seen from the new order decks, they might be quite powerful, especially in uh, our current format. Um, particularly Typhon, I think is probably the best of the four. I hate saying that, but I think he is. Uh, Zeus might be very powerful, kind of depends on the rest of the deck. Um, I don't, so far Athenia isn't really knocking my socks off and Dragonflame is really weird. So, um, so yeah, but with order decks getting better, Loki does kind of inherently get better, and then it just being able to turn zero, put stuff like any resonator slash cancel slash floodgate suite into play, um, just makes it quite impactful. Uh, these all move down into D tier. Uh, Hanzo, Hanzo is kind of like Bru so Hanzo is kind of like Loki. The better rune decks get, the better Hanzo gets, but rune decks aren't good at all, except for Brunhild Seal, and that's like borderline okay. So Hanzo isn't good at all. So we'll still keep Hanzo in D tier. I don't think it's as bad as this, particularly because he plays runes. Um, so we'll just keep him there. Shiva. Uh, I'll move Shiva up a tier. Rig Veda is just such a good card. And Shiva's, um, Shiva's getting some support in the new set uh, that gives it a really good win con for a single mana, um, which Shiva didn't have low mana good win cons so um 
So it getting that makes it play a lot closer to the floor, uh, so it can m invest mana a lot better. So I'm going to move Shiva up a tier. Dante, it's an ordered... Uh, Machina gets to go up a tier purely because it topped, <laughs> it topped an event. We'll see if other combo decks... It's also... Machines are getting a lot of support in the new set. A lot of support. Um, so there might just be a Machina machine deck as well. Um, Dante... Uh, we'll get to Odin in a second. Uh, Dante's going to stay here purely because it's order, purely because it's doing better things than everything down here. We just don't have any results on a Dante list. <clears throat> so that's why it's going to stay there. Odin gets to move up to B tier. Uh, I was super wrong about Odin. <clears throat> I did not think Artillerist and Mistletane were as good of cards as they actually are. Um, particularly into certain matchups, I guess. I watched a Mistletane single-handedly win a uh, quarter um, semifinals. <laughs> um, like two games in a row. Uh, so I just didn't give that card enough credit, I guess. Uh, at least in, again, specific matchups. Uh... It topped two events, right? There's an Odin list in two different events. Uh, so I think it's just a very good, just anti-meta type, like, floodgate strategy. So if you want to play that type of deck, there you go. Um, IU, same thing. I think it's better than everything down here, but it's singleton and I don't have any results for it, so I can't really tell you. Loki, again, same thing. It's a rune deck. It also has access to perfect Loki, which is very, very powerful as a card. Um, but I just don't have any results for it, and I don't know if it's as powerful as the decks up here. I don't think it is. Gilapis, same type of deal. He's kind of pigeonholed into his own, like, cards, right? Like, if you take a look at a lot of the decks that are up here, they have the cards that are designed for them, but they get to also just play good other generic cards. Gil can't really do that. He kind of has to put in all his Limit Break stuff and cards that revolve around his other Limit Break cards, right? So, and those cards are kind of getting outscaled. Persia, same thing. Like, it, so it has all the resonant stuff. It works very well with the Niar cards. Playing, like, the Maria Bella 4-drop that has resonance and then playing a bunch of Niar cards to give it a bunch of triggers, very funny. Um, its stone works very well with the Niar cards to give you value. Um, and then she can just OTK you with either horse, um, the Spirit of Ma'at now, which is basically better horse, um, things like that. So he's just doing a lot of good stuff. Celesta, unfortunately, I'm going to put into outscaled. Like, it doesn't cheat mana. It doesn't do any of that. It just kind of gives you cards and then kind of, like, super suits herself with the treasuries, right? Um, but the treasury effects aren't super impactful. They kind of just draw a bunch. So we're going to keep Celesta in there. Wolfgang kind of cheats mana through heart to heart, uh, which is the same kind of thing Violet does. Wolfgang's cards just aren't as good as... Well, what Wolfgang's doing just isn't as good as what Violet's doing, because Wolfgang can only do it once during each of your turns. Violet gets to do it on each turn. <laughs> um, and then Violet also cycles where Wolfgang just searches and puts into play. Uh, so she gets, like, a bunch of different things. Wolfgang specifically gets the cards designed for him. Violet's cards are more impactful than Wolfgang's, etc., etc. Uh, his, like, win con is also more interact interactable than your own, or than Violet's, um, so that's why we're putting him here. Uh, Imo, we're just going to put down here. Uh, if anyone plays it or has something or whatever, I might make a Wanderer Wednesday for it. Um, it's interesting that you get more mana on your opponent's turn, so you can kind of use dorks that way, um, but uh, I'd have to see a kind of deck that uses Imul effectively. And I haven't figured anything out with it yet. I haven't really been trying, but I also haven't really seen anything. If anyone knows of a deck or has a list, feel free to post it in the comments section. But I just don't really have anything for her right now. If I had, if I could put her at the bottom of D tier, because again, she does cheat will on your opponent's turn. She's predominantly in light, so you can do kind of like the flute dance of spirits thing, similar to what you do with Excalibur Genesis. I just don't think you have, like, an OTK line that the same kind of thing that Excalibur Genesis does, so I don't know if what you're doing is going to be that impactful. Uh, the rest of these decks, they're just all going to stay in outscaled until someone tops with one, I guess, or <laughs> proves me otherwise. Uh, Persia, uh, we're going to keep it down here. Um, 
I, I need to see more results with it before I want to move it up any tiers. Um, uncategorize the band, and then, oh yes, Brad tier. I forgot about Brad tier. Um, but yeah, so that is the updated list, I think. Just looking through all the outscaled stuff to see if there is anything that I have missed. Again, I know I've kept some of these rune rulers, like Loki and stuff up here. They typically just have better runes than, for example, Lucifer, Lich, um, uh, Adam Sakehart, etc., etc. Right. So, this is the new tier list uh, off of my thoughts and the events that we've had to go off of. Uh, you could argue to put my list up into S tier. Um, we're just going to keep it in A tier because it didn't, uh, it didn't have, uh, hmm. actually, could I be, uh, fuck it, we're going to put it up here. We're going to put the Mo the Mujdart version in here, we're going to keep the Grease Blast version in A tier. Um, I just think Draco Witch is probably the better deck. And at the very least, even if Draco Witch, people start to play against Draco Witch, then you can also play the Isis version, uh, which I think has a worse Odin matchup, but, um... So if people aren't playing Odin, then you get to play <laughs> the Isis version, etc., etc. Um, so yeah, all right, there you go. There, there is the new list. There is the new list. Um, so thank you all so much for watching. I know this video was a little bit long, a little bit over an hour, um, but these tier list videos and tournament reports typically go fairly long. I like to ramble and give my thoughts on every single card sometimes. Um, do look forward to the spoiler video this Friday, my other Wander Wednesday video that will be coming out this Wednesday. Uh, what I plan to actually do, I'm going to be going on vacation uh, a week from the release of this video. Uh, I will have Wander Wednesdays scheduled to go up each Wednesday, but I will not have spoiler videos because I do not have spoilers. <laughs> so uh, I will not be having the Friday set videos. When I do get back, which I won't get back until June, um, I will be going over uh, a full set review, be giving my thoughts on it, my top 10 cards, the things that I normally do with like a new set, and what I'll probably do, uh, I don't know if I'll do it for the Wander Wednesdays, if I'll, I'll kind of do it as my new Friday thing for the next four weeks, I'll be building a uh, Wanderer version of the new four rulers, right? Uh, I'm not really interested in new frontiers with Carlina, Feasting, etc. running around. Um, I'm much more interested in Wander and maintaining it, especially since it will be the upped, kept, and like format for the company um, as of August. Uh, again, thank you all so much. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye bye.